you don't know, the third recall in Colorado history is potentially going on in Westminster. After the successful recalls of John Morse and Angela Haron, the folks up in Westminster are trying to oust Evie Hudak, who famously looked at a rape victim and said, eh, the statistics aren't with you. you. You didn't need that gun. Good thing you didn't have it. Sort of is what she said. Todd Shepard has been keeping an eye on what's going on in the Evie Hudak recall. What, for, first of all, how are they doing? How are uh, the recall Hudak right. 2 campaign right. doing? It appears that they're doing fairly well. Um, they're they're close. They're keeping the information close to the vest, as I think most campaigns like that would. Of course, the main thing to keep in mind here is they have uh, a higher threshold of signatures to get than those who are doing the original petitions for the Morse and Heron recalls in in the Springs and in Pueblo. Yeah, they need they need 19,000 valid signatures, roughly, right. and it has to be by December 3rd. So they're they're hustling to to make that happen. Uh, and so this is big, a big fight. Um, the easy ones probably already came through. You know, people who are eager to get rid of Evie Hudak probably drove down to their, to their place on Sixth Avenue and, and took care of business, uh, or they went to e, uh, was it Recall Hudak Two? That's two T O O right uh, dot com and, and and figured out how to do it. So now they've got to get the other signatures, which means perhaps knocking on doors. You have to be a registered voter in Evie Hudak's district, correct? To sign the petition? Right. Yes, you would. And this really comes back to the question of how well can the Hudak 2, uh, it sounds funny to say it like that, but how well can the Hudak 2 uh, petition gathering effort really sort of follow that model that was laid out by Victor Head down in Pueblo where they had gleaned so much previous information from the Secretary of State's office and using iPads, they they virtually verified whether or not you were valid to sign the petition instantaneously so that if you weren't uh, valid, they wouldn't even let you sign. And that's why they, they were able to submit like 11,000 and clear it even though they only needed 9,000 valid. That's something like 98% accuracy. Never seen I, before never, in Colorado. Never seen it. And, right. it's, and it's not a... It wasn't a brainstorm. It was, well, let's check them let's before check. they sign yeah. instead of after they sign. Let's get the information. Let's check the information. Let's put it on an iPad, and which right. it really just sort of takes its note from a lot of the Obama, the, the two most recent Obama campaigns. So if this recall goes forward, most people believe that Evie Hudak will be recalled. She won her election thanks to a libertarian who got 5,000 votes and she only won by about 300 votes. So she knows if she does, if this, if these petitions go through, I, I think it's going to be very difficult for her to survive a recall. So she doesn't want this to go through. The, the best thing that can happen is if they fail in their effort. Am I, am I reading that right? No, absolutely you are. I, I still think she's got a, it, it's a very close vote if the recall happens. Because at this point, the Democrats in her district maybe have that extra bit of motivation that Democrats maybe in Pueblo or Colorado Springs didn't have. And that is, we're not just talking now about a state senator. We're talking about control of the chamber. And so I think the get out the vote effort for the Democrats might be better in this particular instance if it does go to a vote. All right. That gets us to where we are. Right. So there seems to be some wonderful hanky-panky going on about trying to convince people not to sign this recall petition. So I would think that the pro-Hudak people would be going out door to door saying, please, don't sign this petition because Evie works for you. She did the right thing. Here's what she voted for. Here's what she meant, really meant, before she said such an awful thing to a rape survivor. Here's, here's really the real record. And convincing these people that when, when those petition gatherers come knocking on their door and go, no, I'm sorry, I'm happy with my senator. That's what's going on. That's not what's going on. Um, this is, it's so far, uh, a lot of it has been sort of a traditional campaign, which means mail, door hangers, and the oh-so-loved robocall. All right, I want to get to this. And, and, and by the way, thank you for doing the, the mailroom video. S some of the best camera work I've seen since, since Godfather, really. It's, it's, it's incredible. I have a degree in TV journalism. Yeah. Yeah. However, <laughs> whoever you hired for that camera work was, in, was incredible. Um, you got hold of a robocall from the from the Hudak folks going out to those people that she doesn't want to sign this, this petition. What, what was the message here? And then we'll listen to it. Yeah, the message was don't sign the petition, but it's not because Evie is the greatest state senator ever. It gives a completely different message. All right, I tell you what.
And you, you, uh, you broke this on CompleteColorado.com, your one-stop shopping for investigative journals, journalism and others. Let's listen to this robocall you might have gotten if you're in Evie Hudak's district. You have one message, message, one Sunday, 424 p.m. This is a community alert for Ovada and Westminster from the Democracy Defense Fund. Paid signature gatherers who have not gone through a criminal background check could be in Westminster and Arvada this week asking for signatures on a recall petition. Do not sign this petition. The petition gatherer coming to your door asking for your personal information could have a criminal record. If you sign this petition, your signature and personal information will become public record, available for anyone to access. If you wish to report suspicious activity by these paid petition gatherers, please call 720-88-8496. That's 720-588-8496. Paid for by Democracy Defense Fund. End of messages. What a spectacular robocall. This was a community alert. My God, this was like an amber alert trying to save the people of, of Westminster because, good look God, do you realize that people with a criminal record could be coming to your door and making your information public. Thank God this message came out to, to, to help the people of, of Westminster. Tell, tell me, what was a lie in there? Well, the, the lie, uh, now, to be fair, it has been proven that at least one signature gatherer did have a criminal record, a, a paid signature gatherer. But uh, the still, DUI, I believe. Uh, it? Well, like and, and I believe the last, uh, the last item on this individual's uh, criminal record was from 2003. But uh, I think the, the main thing is, is that first line, this is a community alert. And it, it, it really tries to mimic the, the whole sound and tone, as you said, of a reverse 911 or an Amber Alert or something like that. Um, and it tries to prey on, it basically tries to generate confusion based on those kinds of real needed alerts from our community officials like the sheriff or the police department. And it tries to generate confusion such that uh, if someone's in doubt, their inclination will be, well, maybe it's just better if I don't sign it. Let's go through some of the things that they said. Mm -hmm. They said the person at, asking you for your signature could be a criminal. Well, so could the Girl Scout who's selling you cookies. Is, is that incorrect? Well, it, it's certainly incorrect to say uh, the person has not undergone a criminal background check, which I believe they use that exact language. Maybe they have. Maybe it just didn't matter. Maybe it was a misdemeanor from, you know, 2001, and the person got hired to be a petition signature gatherer anyways. Um, so there may be these offhand, you know, one in 100 instances where it's correct, but I think, generally speaking, it's a falsehood. What I love is that the, the could be. Well, right. I agree. That guy could be a criminal. Sure. He, hey, he look, could not be a criminal. I don't know. In the, Chicago, the, in right. New York. The uh, guy you selling know, encyclopedias door to door could be a criminal. Elliot Spitzer, your governor in New York, could be a criminal. Uh, you know, who, who was the, uh, sh the Illinois uh, Rod Blagojevich might be a criminal. Um, you know, there's all kinds of criminal might be. All right. The other part I loved about this is that they are going to be asking for personal information, which they will make public. Now listen, after the NSA, right. after, after all these other things, the last thing I need is some criminal coming to my door, taking my personal information and making it public for anybody to grab, gather, and do whatever the hell they want with? That's scary. But it's nothing new. Um, it it, it may be scary to the uninformed, but in truth, if you sign a petition in Colorado, whether it's to recall a state senator or whether it's to ban plastic bags in some jurisdiction, or the, to put on ballot amendment 66 and raise taxes, or to, to raise taxes through uh, an education tax amendment like 66, when when those signatures go to be verified by the Secretary of State's office, yes, that whole list of everyone who signed ultimately becomes a public record. Right, let's, let's, let's close the circle on this, though. Right. We start off talking about the new method that the recallers are using, which is to have a list, a voter registration list, of all elected, or all, all registered voters, mm -hmm. so that they can look at and see if you're actually there. So the information is already public. That's, that's the beautiful thing about this. They're arguing that, be careful, 
you might make your public information pub public. This is already public information, and it's meant to scare people. It is, and you know, unfortunately, this is this has even been perpetuated a little bit in the media for other items. There was a recent TV news report that said the Secretary of State's office is selling your public information. The truth is, this is the, thanks to the uh, Open Records Act, Secretary of State's office is obliged by matter of law to make this information public. It's part of what we call transparency, to keep our government open and to keep it accountable. Um, but to make it sound, as you said, it, it's playing off the whole NSA scandal, uh, that government will take your information and sell it to Google or sell it to Target or Walmart so that Walmart will now know better how to market you. Trust me, Walmart has much better <laughs> ways to get, get information. Yes, they do. But the point being, if Walmart wants to have your name and address from government forms at the Secretary of State, they already have it, whether you put it on your petition or not. Or not, that's absolutely. Really, that's really good stuff. All right, was this deceptive ad, the scare tactic, done by Evie Hudak, her campaign? Right, and it is, it's worth mentioning, um, while not likely, um, it was paid for by a group called Democracy Defense Fund or Democracy Defense Action, but it's not necessarily Evie Hudak controlled that we can say that there's a one-to-one -one correlation there. Uh, but this is, of course, as I think most people know, how politics has devolved now. You set up these outside organizations that are not directly affiliated to the politician that can do the dirty work, so to speak, without the politician having to take direct responsibility for it. Well, certainly Evie's got to have an opinion on this. I mean, did she weigh in on, on, on this? I mean, as we started, she said, if these people came to the door and said, your senator is a good person, she votes her conscience, it's a good thing to do, you should keep her in office, that seems pretty above board. So does she condone this? Uh, to, to, as of right now of this airing or of this taping, we have not heard anything from uh, Senator Hudak as to whether or not she condones uh, or even supports these kinds of commercials. Nine News did a very similar story on the door hangers. When the door hangers first came out, they didn't get comment from uh, Senator Hudak either. Did you ask Senator Hudak? I, actually, I did not. Uh, I published it very quick as a blog note. Um, Senator Hudak can obviously contact me anytime. The email address is angrytodd at gmail.com, so feel free to... Angry Todd? Yeah, I know. Why? Oh, why I'm a angry? sweet guy. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really... Why, then why Angry Todd? Oh, you're trying... I know. It's for, it's for your online dating. You right, just want to right, seem more yes. masculine. Todd, thank you so much. Again, check out Todd's website, completecolorado.com. It's a great news aggregator. Make it a part of your daily read. Check out the Independence Institute, independenceinstitute.org. Listen for me on KHOW, and talk to you next week.